This morning, an attorney representing eight corrections officers of color is talking about the discrimination lawsuit filed against Ramsey County. The officers work at the Ramsey County Adult Detention Center. The lawyer says supervisors there prohibited all correctional officers of color from entering or working on the floor where former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin was being held. Chauvin is charged with murder in George Floyd's death. Eight employees of color who were on duty at the time of this incident filed charges of discrimination against Ramsey County with the Minnesota Department of Human Rights. We'll hear from the lawyer on our newscast about that lawsuit at 5.30 and 10. Well, there is a lot to talk about this Sunday morning, and one person who is at the center of Minnesota's most pressing issues on race, justice, and public safety is, of course, the Minnesota Attorney General, Keith Ellison, who is kind enough to join us today. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Um, and it is, I want to wish you a happy Father's Day because you've been kind enough to come in and talk about issues of parenting and parenting children of color, but it's a pretty sobering Father's Day. Your, your thought on some of the violence that's going on. Well, it's deeply disturbing. We need to have safety. We need some peace and calm. Uh, we've been through a lot, you know, and uh, Yet, uh, this is a sober reminder that uh, despite everything, you know, some things we would rather not happen do happen. And so I would just urge everybody to be safe and, um, and to look after your loved okay. ones. All right, you are in charge of the Derek Chauvin prosecution. It's your case. What do you make of this lawsuit filed by eight corrections officers in Ramsey County who were told to get off the floor when Derek Chauvin was brought in because they were black? I guess the supposition is that they wouldn't be able to control themselves or something like that? Yeah, I've only read the story like everybody else. I don't know, have any details. The allegations are disturbing, but I'm just gonna have to wait like, uh, and figure out what happens next. But they are concerning allegations. All right, uh, and this is something that is just breaking. There's going to be a news conference here later this morning, so we'll update that story. But that one is certainly shocking. Let me ask you, since you are at the center of this Derek Chauvin case, uh, the publicity here worldwide, can Derek Chauvin get a fair trial in Hennepin County or even in the state of Minnesota? Yes, he can. I'm very confident that we uh, will we have a jury that will come together and judge the evidence fairly. You know. As may, it's not required that people not have any knowledge or have never heard of a particular case. What's required is that they are able to say, I can set what I've heard aside until I've heard all of the evidence. That's what's required. So it really wouldn't make a good juror who just didn't know anything because that would indi indicate that they are not watching the news, not informed, not curious. But uh, we do ask jurors to say, look, you may have heard a lot of stuff, put that to the side as you hear other parts of other pieces of evidence that you may not have heard, and then after you have it all, then you're free to deliberate and make a decision. Okay. Uh, we're coming off this weekend of a spectacular collapse at the legislature of any kind of police reform. Both sides said that they wanted it. A year ago, you and Commissioner Harrington spent a lot of time yeah. on a commission to look at this very issue long before George Floyd was killed. Right. Your thoughts about the collapse and, and the fact that you were pushing, you've been pushing on this for years to get some changes. Well, well I, I urge all parties to get back to the, 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 the work uh, and make some real decisions about how we have a proper relationship between police and community. Uh, I think that there were some great ideas that were in front of the legislature. I'm disappointed they couldn't come to an agreement. I hope they keep working because literally, you know, the safety of our whole society depends upon them getting that work done. So right. I was disappointed to see the breakdown. All right. Um, you know, I wanted to ask you about uh, that breakdown and just the difficulties that people are having right now. Right. Um, uh, you have four young adult children. Yes. Um, there are so many parents in that debate uh, over the over this past week where parents have really just anguished about their children of color, young adults being out there. Your thoughts about that? Well, you know, my father taught me, don't talk back to the police, keep your hands on the wheel. Uh, if they do something to you, there's not going to be much any of us can do about it. And so be extra careful. What do you think about your children, one of whom is a Minneapolis City Council yeah. member, Jeremiah Ellison? I mean, do you worry about them? I, I worry about them every day. Every day I, I go to bed worrying about them. And uh, But, you know, they were raised uh, in the Ellison household, so they all are committed okay. to fighting for a more just world. And uh, so um, okay. I think that that's our solace. I want to ask 
One question. One of the things that Republicans absolutely said no to in their package of, of their own police reforms, the th thing that was a poison pill for them, was turning over cases to your office, uh, places, cases of deadly force. The Minnesota County Attorneys Association voted 16 to 10 to do that. Jim Backstrom, the 30-year county attorney in Dakota County, testified in favor of that, said it would be a better system to have the attorney general's office handle these cases. Republicans said absolutely absolutely not a line in the sand there why do you think that is well I think that uh, some people really need to study the fact that the Attorney General's office handles cases for the counties all the time right. and every day we we prosecute cases all over the state for counties every day there's a trust relationship we work together uh, they know us they trust us we trust them we work as allies and I don't know if all the members of that Republican caucus are aware of that I think that we might need to just sit down and just walk them through the facts a little bit more. Okay, because I, I, certainly people wouldn't accuse Jim Baxter of being sort of a left-wing hack or something like that. It just, it just it was something that I know surprised a lot of reporters and there were a lot of questions about it and so much going on. Well, I think a lot of the county attorneys know that independent investigation and prosecution leads yeah. to greater public trust. Uh, that We have great prosecutors in the state of Minnesota, but I think that the yeah. county attorneys um, are, are, are a voice that we should listen to because they know what they're talking about. Okay. Attorney General Keith Ellison, thank you so much for coming in. Happy Father's Day to thank you. you. You're one of the busiest people in the state of Minnesota, so we really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you, Esme. Okay.